You're listening to the Just Japan Podcast. Everything you want to know about Japan. Hey there, folks, and welcome to episode number 50 of the Just Japan Podcast. Everything you want to know about Japan. My name is Kevin O'Shea. I'm a Canadian living here in Japan. And each week, the Just Japan Podcast brings to you a different topic about Japan. Something interesting that you will have fun listening to. Uh, yeah, so that's it, guys. I'm, I'm excited. Um, it's been an amazing week for the Just Japan Podcast. It's been a very exciting week, and I'm sometimes i say things like that but this week really has been amazing um yeah so things are going well this is of course the fourth episode of the new year 2015 and i want to thank everyone out there who has uh, downloaded episode number 50 of the just japan podcast i want to thank you for taking the time to listen to it whether you're listening to us on itunes on stitcher internet radio libsyn or soundcloud uh yeah just thank you so much it, it, it's been wow it's been a, a fun ride this week. It definitely has. Um, to start with, earlier on the week, uh, the Just Japan podcast got a nice nod, uh, a very wonderful nod, from a, a really amazing website, this really cool contemporary geek culture website called moregeek.com. And that's M-O-A-R, M-O-A-R, geek.com. And on the 20th of January, they did... Uh, an article on moregeek.com called The Top 10 Geeky Podcasts. And they mentioned some really amazing podcasts. And we were in the mix, guys, at Just Japan Podcast. I was really, wow, I was really humbled by this. Um, there was podcasts such as Current Geek, Geek Days, Nintendo Dads, The Instance, Major Spoilers, Sword and Laser, which is, oh my god, wow, DLC, and the Just Japan podcast, thinking nerd parents, but the Just Japan podcast and moregeek.com, uh, the write up that they they put on their website about the Just Japan podcast goes something like this: If you geek out about everything Japan, this is hands down the best and most consistently updated podcast on Japanese culture and customs. Uploaded weekly, host Kevin O'Shea usually interviews long term expats and experts on Japanese culture, and to, to find out the inside scoop about everything from being an assistant language teacher to fast food in Japan. So uh, that's really awesome. I really appreciate that nod from moregeek.com. That link's going to be in the show notes of boostonkevin.com. So that's very cool. So there, so okay, so that happened on, gosh, the 20th. That's uh, Tuesday morning. Now on Tuesday night, a very cool thing happened. Um, kind of late into the evening, um, the Just Japan podcast, uh, episode number 48, Fast Food in Japan, was featured on the Gaijin Pot blog. Now, for those of you out there who may not be familiar, Gaijin Pot is the biggest job search website here in Japan. And this year, the or I should say last year, the Gaijin Pot blog was created by Anthony Joe. Now, Anthony Joe is a really awesome dude from Canada who is also a past guest on the Just Japan podcast where he was on talking about GaijinPot.com and just himself and the different things he does. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, episode number 48 was featured on the Gaijin Pot blog. Uh, a lot of people listen to uh, the episode definitely on the SoundCloud. Um, wow. As of right now, it is. I'm recording... Episode number 50, it is the evening of the 24th of January, and we've got uh, almost 400 listens on SoundCloud alone uh, to that episode, which is really cool. So I, 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 ponied, up, I ponied up the money, guys, um, and I got my unlimited pro account on SoundCloud, so that's just another option for you guys out there to listen to as much of the Just Japan podcast as you want to on SoundCloud. Uh, previously, I had the pro account, which only gave me six hours um, of, of, of listening time. So basically what would happen is 
I would always upload a new episode uh, and, and, and embed that SoundCloud file into the show notes at BusanKevin.com. But eventually I'd have to start deleting past episodes so I could upload new ones. But with the, the Unlimited Pro account, um, hey, I can upload as much silliness as I want. And I am for you guys to enjoy. So I want to I wanna thank the Gaijin Pot blog. Um, you go to blog.gaijinpot.com. And you can find episode number 48. That that link will be in the show notes and boostonkevin.com. So um, uh, an, a nod to uh, Gaijin Pot, to uh, Anthony, um, and to, uh, to moregeek.com. Now! Okay. Things get even cooler. Boostonkevin.com. Boostonkevin.com. That is the hub of the Just Japan podcast. That's basically <clears throat> the website is essentially where I, I I host the show notes for every episode. So it's information about the show and all the different links um, for you to subscribe to the show, like in Stitcher and SoundCloud and iTunes and listen to the Ellipsum player. Um, I put photos there. I put all the links to the guests who are on the episode each week. I have a different guest, so all of their social media links, their Twitter, their Facebook, wherever it may be. Um, Last week, with the commemorative episode, um, I should say more like the kind of memorial episode uh, for the 20th anniversary of the Kobe earthquake, I put a lot of videos in the show notes as well, different documentaries about the earthquake and stuff, to kind of give people more context and to be able to kind of sit back and, and to watch and really learn kind of more about how tragic the event was. But nonetheless, BoostonKevin.com is the uh, the hub the, uh, of the podcast. This is where we keep the show notes. Um, honestly, n- doesn't get a lot of traffic, that website. Uh, you know, consistently, you know, people are, are poking around and looking there, but not a lot of traffic. You know what? The other night, I decided to just sit back down and sit down and write a blog post. Like, to actually... I mean, you guys know me as a YouTuber. I'm Busan Kevin. I'm Jay Lane Kev. And, I, you know, that's it, it's easy to just, like, fire up a camera and yammer to a camera for a few minutes and upload it, and boom, there you go. But I decided I wanted to write a blog post because I haven't done this in a long time. And originally, before I had the podcast, the Just Japan podcast, that's what the that's what BusanKevin.com was for. It was essentially, it was supposed to be a written, a written blog. Um... And I wrote some posts initially, but then it became, you know, I started the podcast and it became the the home of the show notes. So I wrote a blog called Five Maddening Things About Japan. And for anyone out there who's interested in, in starting a blog, lists are always a great way to go. Um, a list format for a blog. The 10 most delicious foods in Kobe. The 10 least delicious foods in Kobe. The, the five scariest animals in japan the five cutest animals in japan whatever it may be um they're easy to write and they tend to do very well in blog format you're going to get a lot of people reading you're going to a lot of eyeballs on the screen if you put these kind of list posts out there some people might say well that's the easy way of doing things well whatever it depends on what your goal is but i hadn't written in a long time so i decided hey let's do something easy very tongue-in-cheek you know i've been in japan for a long time i love japan it's a great place to live and you know i i walk around every day with a smile on my face no matter where you live in the world i'm from canada i'm in japan both countries have warts there's always things that'll irritate you about both any country in the world, no matter where you live, there are things that will irritate you about it, no matter how much you love the country. I love Canada to death. I am a flag-waving, proud Canadian. I love, I just love Canada so much. And the more time I spend away from Canada, the more I love it. But there are things about Canada that irritate me, you know. Um, so I wrote a very tongue-in-cheek post, and I even said that in the post. I wrote a very tongue-in-cheek. I'm kind of joking around. Um... Yeah, so I wrote this post, and it went out. And, you know, a lot more people were reading it than normally would look at the Boost on Kevin site. So today, it's Saturday, the 24th, and I work. I had to work today. So I was on the train going to work. And all of a sudden, on my WordPress app, on my iPhone, I started getting a lot of pings, a lot of people leaving comments. And normally, people don't leave comments on my, on my, my BoostOnKevin.com site. Not so common. I was like, what the heck's going on? This doesn't make sense. 
Um, and then I get a I get a I get a Facebook message from a friend of mine, and he says, "Hey, Kevin, I just saw your blog post featured on the Tofugu, Tofugu.com Facebook page." And for for those of you out there who might not know what Tofugu.com is, it is one of the most popular Japanese language learning websites out there. Period. And I mean, they're they're. Uh, their their Facebook page is like forty two thousand likes. So they took my they took my post and they said, here's a post from someone who's been in Japan for a while. And uh yeah, within um twenty four hours, my well, boostonkevin.com went from going you know, from its normal hundred to hundred and fifty hits a day to about four thousand hits. I was like, wow, well, yay, cool. So that's cool. So um, for those of you out there uh, who somehow maybe are listening to the Just Japan podcast for the first time because you came um, across us in kind of a roundabout way via Tofugo.com and their Facebook page, hey guys, welcome and thank you so much. For those of you out there who are listening uh, to the Just Japan podcast and you're new because you came across us on the Gaijin Pop blog, hey guys, welcome, thank you so much for stopping by. And for those of you out there who are listening to us now because of moregeek.com, thank you so much. I'm really happy to have you guys on board. This is a great freaking community, the Just Japan podcast community. Um, awesome people. Um, and we, we interact a lot on the Just Japan podcast Facebook page. So that link's going to be in the show notes too. Um, the Just Japan podcast Facebook page is just such an awesome place to be. Uh, yeah, there's like 2,600 of you awesome peeps out there right now who are on the facebook page um i know i know a lot of you out there too are there because you're my um youtube friends your people who enjoy my youtube videos not making as much of them as i used to because of my work schedule but uh this podcast is definitely a priority um because it just i love it so much and uh, yeah so thank you guys all for listening <laughs> Guys, like I always talk about, like I always say, like I always mention, of course, you can support the Just Japan podcast over on Patreon.com. That is like a virtual tip jar. It helps. It helps with things. Um, you know, paying for the servers, for the SoundCloud, and all the other little geeky things that go into producing the Just Japan podcast. Um, hey, you don't have to. That's cool. No matter what, the Just Japan podcast is going to be coming out every week for you to listen and uh, to listen to and enjoy but it's always an option you guys can support the show um hey buck a month helps it's awesome stuff links in the show notes at boostonkevin.com check out for the patreon page now also of course you can listen to the just event podcast oh excuse me in itunes great way to always get the newest episodes subscribe in itunes um, if you're not an iTunes person, you can always listen to us on Stitcher Radio. We're there. So if you know, you're know you an Android user, um, you, you can even listen to us on, on your PC, your your MacBook, your iMac, whatever it may be, your, whatever device you have uh, using Stitcher Radio. Uh, of course, SoundCloud. We're on SoundCloud.com. Just Japan Podcast. Go search for us. And if you're if you're already looking at the show notes at, at uh, boostonkevin.com, you can see the SoundCloud player is embedded right there. So I'm going to put links to the Libsyn web player as well. And even if you want to download the sound file directly, it is an M4A file. Some of you might have difficulty playing it, but I'll put that in the show notes as, as well. So go check that out. Okay, so tonight's episode is all about getting involved in community in Japan. And when I talk about getting involved in the community, I'm not talking about getting involved in the foreigner community, you know, hanging out with other expats, other gaijin and stuff like that. I'm talking about getting involved in the Japanese community. And this is an interesting episode. This is kind of for those out there who are really thinking about staying here long term in Japan and how they can make their time in Japan more fulfilling, make more connections. And yeah, just kind of make your time here more comfortable um you know the over the years that i've been in japan i i've been in korea different places i've met a lot of negative foreigners a lot of bitter foreigners a lot of people who really didn't like being here yet they're here and there's a bit of a trap you can fall into when you first come to a place like japan or you come to a place like korea and for those of you, of you out there who are listening maybe for the first time i'll mention korea from time to time because i lived in south korea for five and a half years as a teacher before i came to japan 
uh, stop in Canada in between. Um, but you'll meet these people who, who uh, some expats who come abroad and they, they come to a place like Japan and they get here and they just kind of very quickly attach themselves to a group of foreigners. And each night after work, they just go to a foreigner bar that there's mostly only foreigners hanging out there. And they drink and they get drunk and then they go home. The next day they go to work. And then the, the night after that night, they go back to the foreigner bar or a different foreigner bar and they drink and this and that. And those people often kind of live in a bit of an isolationist bubble. And, uh, you know, you meet a lot of people who get quite negative about being in Japan. Uh, you know, they kind of, the fact that it, it, it is a very different country than their own and and one of the key things to surviving here and really enjoying life here is to being very open-minded and also to understand that it is very different it's not like where you're from japan won't change to become like where you're from and you have to understand that you have to kind of let go and understand that and even if you don't understand it you have to realize that it's just not like where you're from and um you know if you're willing to give and take you can really Enjoy your time here. So um, this week's really cool. Uh, Just Japan podcast listener uh, Josh reached out to me and he said, hey, um, I've got an interesting story to tell about me kind of becoming a member of my local community here in Japan. And Josh is a Canadian who lives in the Kansai region of Japan. And he's involved in a lot of Japanese community organizations. So very cool. Um, this is the kind of thing I'm not involved in at the moment uh, at all. What he's involved in, very different than the things I'm doing. I'm, I'm mostly wrapped up in work, graduate studies, and my family. Now, he's got work, um, you know, his family, of course. And he's doing a lot of really cool things uh, within his community. And, uh, yeah, so so Josh from Canada is going to tell us a little bit about the different things he's doing in order to, and, and the kind of things that maybe you could do if you're thinking of living in Japan long term to become a part of the Japanese community. So let's sit back and take a listen to uh, our interview with Josh. <laughs> Okay, everyone. Well, thank you for listening to the interview portion of the Just Japan podcast, episode number 50. And this episode is all about getting involved in the community in Japan. And this evening, I want to thank uh, Josh for taking the time to speak with us. I'm very happy. Very happy to be here. It's, I, I listen to the podcast a lot, so it's uh, it's fun. That's great. Awesome. So um, Josh is uh, uh, taking the time to talk with us tonight, and we're going to talk about getting involved in the community. When I when I say the community, I'm not talking about the foreign community in Japan, because often, uh, you know, when you think of like getting involved in the community, as a, the fact that I'm a foreigner talking about that, you might think the foreign community or the gaijin community. But we're talking actually about like literally the community you live in. And if you're in Japan, you're in a Japanese community. So um, uh, to begin with, Josh, can you maybe tell the Just Japan podcast listeners, um, you know, where you're from and how long you've been in Japan? Sure, no problem. Yeah, so I'm I'm Canadian too, uh, from Ontario, and I've been here in Japan for about ten years now. Okay. I spent uh, my first year in Yamaguchi, which was uh, very quiet, mm. <laughs> and I've been in Kansai for nine years now. Okay, so you're in the Kansai region. Yes. Um, yes. So for those of you who you know, my, I always have to remember that there are people who are who are catching on late. In the podcast history, I suppose. Um, this is episode number 50, but uh, I know that because of the fact that we were just recently featured in the Gaijin Pop blog, there's a lot of new listeners. Great. And for those, of, for those of you out there listening, thank you so much for jumping on board. And, uh, you know, it's uh, the Kansai region, if you're not familiar too much with the geography of Japan, and you know, maybe you are not, it's, I, I believe, the second largest kind of... Uh, Population-wise, the the second largest kind of area in Japan, next to the Kanto region, or like Tokyo, Yokohama. Yeah, the little the little brother. You were the little brother. You know, we've got the uh, Osaka, Kobe, Kyoto, those cities. So now, where do you live right now? I've been. I, I live in Yao, and I've. It's called Yao City, which is basically a suburb of. Uh, pardon me, if that's going to. Sorry, sorry. No problem. Uh, I I live in Yao City, which is a suburb of. Of Osaka, basically, okay. uh, to the to the uh, southeast, close to uh, Nara. Okay, 
great, great. Um, I'm, I'm a little, actually, I, I've never been to Yao, but I'm familiar with, I've heard a lot about it because my wife actually spent several years living in Yao City. Yeah, this is this, I think this might be the second week in a row that, that Yao gets talked about. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's, it's yeah, true, true. That because it, in, in last week's episode, um, talking about the, the Kobe earthquake, my wife talked about, she was living in Yao when the earthquake hit and, and her memories of it. Um, so yeah, so there we go. So Yao City on the Just Japan podcast map twice, two weeks in a row, and 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 it might be in the future again if I can convince my wife to come on some other time and talk about <laughs> another topic. Um, but yeah, so I mean, okay. Uh, now we we were discussing this back and forth via messenger and email and whatnot about getting involved in community, and I think uh, for those of you guys that they're listening. One of the things that I found really interesting, what Josh Josh talked to me about being involved in the community, and he wanted to share his experiences, um, and I found that really interesting because when I think of, I think the majority of most the the majority of most <laughs> the majority of of foreigners who come to Japan tend to stay only for a short time. Yes, you would agree. Oh yeah, well, uh, especially when you're if you're involved in the uh, the Eikaiwa or the English language school mm. system. You see, I can remember, especially young women would come and go uh, very quickly. There, it, possibly the the um, the masculine nature of the culture was un, unfriendly to them in some way, or just being homesick. And a lot of boy, a lot of men also, you know, would come and go. Um, you'd see people come and go constantly. Yeah, I, I, so. it, it's very much like a revolving door. Yes, uh, and. You know, I spent I spent about five and a half years living in South Korea before I came to Japan, and very much so the same. Actually, more so there I find than here in Japan. Okay. Um, but I mean, I've been working here now for about six years, and I've I've met a lot of wonderful people, and I said goodbye to a lot of wonderful people. Yes. And um, now the fact that I've been here as long as I have, and I'm married to a Japanese person, and I have children, I tend to find myself now gravitating more towards Japanese people. And spending time with my wife's friends who have children, and not so much with the foreign community. Certainly, I I really attempt to find a middle there, sort of a mm. sort of a, a middle lane there, and it is very difficult because um, with some of the things I've done, I've been able to help or connect with some of the foreign community, and then people disappear sometimes. You know, people people uh, sort of go on with their lives. Mm. And their, their lives take them back home or to a different country or and lots of different things. So it's difficult. But in, in some ways, the hope of getting involved in, in, in Japan is to uh, allow people to stay here as long as they actually would like to. Because some people leave before they even want to go home mm. for various reasons. Very true, very true. And I mean, actually, one of the things that I was I was actually talking to some coworkers about. Now I work in a my work environment is, is actually I, I work with a lot of foreigners. So I mean, I'm not, I'm not I'm not saying that I I actively try to stay away from foreigners. Anything but I love hanging out with foreigners. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the fact that now I'm I'm a middle aged guy who has kids. Um, I tend to focus more on my family as opposed to like you know I don't go out and party and and hang out at the expat clubs and bars anymore like I used to many years ago. Um, mm, yeah. But one of the things, uh, and and I, you know, uh, a few years ago, I I, I wrote like a, a little ebook about teaching in uh, English, uh, teaching in in Japan and Korea. One of the things I talked about was this trap that many foreigners find themselves in when they yes. come to a place like Japan, where they they come to a place like well, they come to Japan or Korea, and there's a lot of similarities, and they find themselves getting a job at an eikaiwa or as a language teacher at a public school, and they only hang out with other foreigners. And it happens then, a lot, yeah. Yeah, and then every night they just go to the foreigner bar and yes. they drink and they bitch and complain about Japan. And yes. they become – they tend to become quite bitter. And, you know, we all know the, the tale of bitter foreigners. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's ironic because so many of us are involved with teaching and the first bit of advice that we might give our students when they go to a different country is don't just hang out with people from your country because you won't get the advantage that – of the reason that the majority of those people are going to, you know, Canada or America, if you just hang out with Japanese people, it you might as you might as well be back home, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, you know, I well, I can remember when I when I worked in when I worked in Korea, and I, there was a, one year I taught adults, and I would have a lot of like uh, I would teach a lot of university students or adults who who had been in who had actually traveled to Canada, 
to mm. study English. And all they did was complain about how expensive kimchi and soju was in Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 you would find out you you would you'd meet these people who have just atrocious English, and they and you'd say oh they I lived in Canada how long were you there a year really, and you would find out that they'd only spent all of their time hanging out with other Korean people yes going to Korean restaurants going to Korean supermarkets buying all the Korean food going home cooking the Korean food drinking the Korean booze, and I'm you know and I'm sure there are Japanese people who maybe find themselves in the same situation, absolutely and and. Uh, some of the things I'm involved with, uh, I'm, I'm lucky enough to also have made a lot of connections in the Chinese community and the uh, the Vietnamese community, which is uh, uh, very large in, in Yao City. And okay. you do you do see the fact in those communities also, because they're probably a bit more tight knit than the English community, mm. that you have people who are reaching towards being elderly, and they've been here for a tremendous amount of time, but they can't read and they can't um they can possibly talk reasonably well speak reasonably well but they can't get the information that is becoming so necessary mm. and part of that is because of that that you know uh, that you know closing the door to the outside world in some senses mm. Well, okay. So uh, now this, this leads us to to many things I want to talk about. Um, so you are. And uh, you know, I, I did send you. I did send you some kind of questions to talk about. I'm, yes. I, I think we'll jump all over the place. We'll go where the conversation takes us. I'll do um, my best. No, yeah, but it's so, okay. So um, you uh, came to Japan. You're working in Japan, um, and you decided what kind of now you work with the the. Uh, the Japanese community, you work with a foreign community. Uh, maybe just to kind of put a little bit of perspective, what are, what are some of the things that you are involved with? Sure. Uh, let me see here. Basically, I do one major thing and a few minor things. Okay. The major thing that I that I do uh, with with this kind of involvement is I work with the the local human rights center. Okay. And the main job that we do together is we do a bi monthly uh, pamphlet of sorts. It's it's a bit. I don't know what to call it. It's about twelve pages long, mm -hmm. and uh, we meet together. We sort of dissect the two months of magazines that the the Japanese community produces from the from the city. Okay. We find uh, what we think might be the best for the foreign community or the most important. Uh, we all it's a it's a varied group, so we all have different uh, ways to judge what's important. Mm -hmm. And and we translate that, and we we get we bring we we publish it and put it out for uh, English people, Chinese people, Vietnamese people, and anyone else who can understand those languages. So what what what, what type of information may you know are you kind of looking forward to share with the foreign community? That's a difficult that's a difficult thing because um, it's the, the meetings are always friendly, but there is a bit of uh, disagreement on what is important. Okay. And I tend to side a bit with uh, some of the Japanese people that are there in some ways, uh, in the sense that we need to make it interesting and we need to make it very simple. Okay. Uh, whereas sometimes the, the, uh, the other groups represented there, uh, and often what happens is we focus on uh, medical information, okay. taxes, and pension. All right. And that's a huge amount of what we do, and and the, that brings back what I said before about the uh, the uh, growing the the growing elderly population of people who can't read Japanese properly. Um, that's that's what we're that's our sort of our um, our gift to them. Okay. Because they uh, they need that more than maybe you, more fun information that I would love to to share a bit more. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, one of the things that I found in my kind of short time here, and I know I've been here for six years, but still compared to a lot of the foreigners who, who have talked to you on the podcast, I've uh, been here much longer. Um, you know, I, I've met a lot of long-term expats who are here who speak Japanese very well, communicate very well in the spoken, the, the oral the oral way, um, but they don't read Japanese. And they, yeah. And they don't read well. Um, I'm a, yeah, I'm a, I have a, a real oddity in that sense where my listening is is reasonably good, and my speaking is sometimes embarrassing. Uh, I can 
say a lot of things, but I make I still make a tremendous amount of mistakes that uh, may, uh, create a shyness in myself sometimes. But I can I can understand the meaning of a lot of the things that I can read. So so I, I sometimes I even skip the Japanese. It's it's in the sense that I look at the I look at I can look at a lot of the words mm -hmm. and translate them directly to English okay. instead of instead of actually needing the pronunciation of the Japanese. It's if if anybody studied Japanese, they might understand slightly what I mean. Okay. Well, what is what is your background with studying Japanese? I'm just curious. It's just uh, here, uh, just here. So you I hadn't came. you hadn't studied Japanese in Canada before you came here? No, I was I was short sighted with that. I studied. Uh, you know, of course, uh, being a Canadian, I grew up studying French. Mm, yes, yeah. I, I studied German through uh, university. Languages was was my is my background. Okay, so so before you came to Japan, you you could al you could already speak uh, multiple languages. Oh, uh, that's <laughs> that's hard to say. <laughs> okay, well, well, okay, so some chunks and bits and pieces of different languages. <laughs> sure, yeah. I okay. would I would I wouldn't push it too far, but yeah, I I studied them quite a lot. Okay, yeah, no, I know. I, I, in the past, I've I've met a few people who I can remember meeting a few people in in Korea and Japan who who spoke the the, the language very well. I'm like, oh wow, I, I can remember meeting two two different guys I think of in in Korea who had only been in Korea for a couple of years. Well, one guy who'd only been here for a year, and he spoke quite fluent Korean. I was like, how the heck did you do that? He's like, well, to be honest, I speak seven languages. So I'm, it, it kind of comes easy. And there was another guy I met who was like, you know, this. it was very rare to, to, to meet a white guy who could speak Korean. I was like, wow, you speak Korean. He's like, well, to be honest, I was a Korean translator with the American army. And, yeah, yeah. and he was like, I speak five languages. It was like, oh, okay. That's that's certainly not me. My case is more that uh, a bit connected to the subject tonight in the fact that I wanted to be involved. Okay. I got involved probably even prematurely possibly but i was quite willing and i you know I, I, and I was and i was here and i was here for the long run and i was willing to work really hard and so i got involved in some things in translating uh and possibly i learned some bad habits which is why that i um i some my speaking is sometimes weak because i i skipped a lot of that and and focused on the actual uh alphabet in in, in the kanji sense so you uh, you spent a lot of time studying kanji as opposed to Kind of setting conversational Japanese, yeah, and especially kanji that was involved in the in the specific things that we're doing for the community. Oh, okay. uh, again, so I know I can I can read about taxes and pensions and things like that. Uh, there, I might have some weak points still. But. Okay, yeah. I mean, well, you meet you, you meet people who speak very you know very fluent Japanese and they they read quite a bit, but when, for example, maybe it's very rare for them to be involved in a medical incident. Or to deal with a yeah, hospital, <clears throat> and then once they have to go to a hospital, all of a sudden there's this whole new set of this vocabulary that they just don't know. I I can recall uh, just a quick story about that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I went to the hospital once with my baby girl, who's now in first grade okay. of elementary school. So it was quite a while ago, and uh, she was going to get her shot, and it, I was just sort of accompanying her. Everything had been planned, you know, and. The doctor, they handed me these forms, like basically con medical contracts in a sense, you know, uh, waiver forms. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they said, do you understand everything on this page? And I said, I, I, what do, you, do you want me to lie? I don't. I can't possibly say that I understand everything on this page. And they refused to give me service. And we had to call grandma up to, to come over <laughs> and, wow. and do it. So, yeah, that, it, yeah, it's. Well, I mean, you know, I'm in a situation myself, you know, speaking for myself, my Japanese is. I, I speak very little Japanese, and I can almost read no Japanese. I can read hiragana and katakana. I've never mm -hmm. studied kanji. And people are like, what the heck? Um, I've been in Japan for six years, and uh, i got a few reasons why. Number one, laziness. <laughs> um, number two, I live in Kobe. If you live in Kobe, Japan, you can actually very easily get by without speaking any Japanese. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that, that kind of like goes coincides with the laziness. Um, number three, I had met my Japanese wife before I came to Japan. And our language of our relationship was always English. And when I came here, it was just kind of like she kind of took, took care of me like I was an infant. Yeah. And uh, and also then I work I, I work at a, a company where uh, I'm, it's pretty much mostly uh, foreigners and we use only English. Yes, yes. So I don't get to use any Japanese in my work, um, which is actually the reason why I left the company. I left this company I worked for, for many years. I left for a year and actually decided to um, make less money. And I went and I worked in the Japanese public school system and, uh, scary. It was, 
<laughs> well, I, I I did it for one year. Yes. <laughs> and then I kind of went back to my roots. Um, it it was it was scary, but I got to admit, in that year, my Japanese got a hell of a lot better. Yeah. Oh, certainly. So, I mean, absolutely. I've had similar experiences in the past, and it's uh, you know, and I have similar excuses in, in some senses for for my 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 ability not being as good as I wish it was. Mm, yeah. Um, but absolutely. But maybe if I were uh, able to pay a compliment to my wife, um, I uh, along with the involvement in the community, I also have, have run some businesses and. and uh, Okay. So in, in some senses, let's say like eight years ago, I would pass the phone. I was always passing the phone. What? Huh. Sorry, I don't understand what you're saying. Sorry, sorry. That's me. And my, yeah. <laughs> and, and my wife wouldn't put up with it. She just said, um, you know, this, this, no, I'm not doing it. If you, and I wanted really badly to, to, uh, to run my own sort of thing. Mm. And I had to uh, start to study a little bit extra, take some extra lessons when I, you know, I was still tight, you know, I was tired from working, but, you know, study a little extra and get to the point where I could answer the phone mm. and, and communicate. And that was enormous for me. I, I can, you know, even if sometimes when Japanese people speak English quite well, I speak on the phone a little bit better than they do with certain things because of the amount of practice that I've had to do with, uh, with that sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. With certain topics, like you said, like, you know, numbers, the- especially. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yes. Well, okay. Well, oh, I mean, um, so there, okay. So for the people out there in the Just Japan podcast uh, universe listening, um, so for those, for the sake of the people who who are, who are curious about the, this fluency issue, we're talking about Japanese. How much Japanese you should know? If you do want to get involved in your local community, do you need to be fluent in Japanese? It's a, it's it's a well, difficult. What one, would you man. say? I would say no. Hmm. Um. I mean, from my experience, and my Japanese is piss poor, to use an yeah. East Coast expression, because I'm, I'm a caper from <laughs> Nova Scotia. Um, I have found that, and now often when I, the moments I do, the, the times when I do interact with Japanese people on the weekends um, with my family, that's when I'm like, ah, oh, Kevin, learn more. Um, <laughs> but I find that they're quite accommodating. Sure. And they try a lot. I mean, the, the kind of younger people like my age, well, no, I don't know if they say younger, but uh, the people my age, um, you know, they, they try to accommodate me. They try to help. They appreciate the fact that I'm trying my best mm-hmm. to yes. speak Japanese to them. And we kind of have this kind of a broken mishmash of like kind of broken English and broken Japanese back and forth. But they seem to really appreciate the fact that I'm just. I'm 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 coming to the Jidokan, the community center. I'm coming to different things, the local Hoikwen and or, or here or there, and I'm I'm there and I'm being involved and having fun. If if I were to give any advice, it would probably be something along these lines. It would be come to Japan, you know, have a great time. Uh, you know, when you come here, if you if you're here working especially, or if you're here as a student, be a student and enjoy yourself and study Japanese. Mm. And get involved in the things that are very specific to that um, area. Okay. As a student, or if you come as a teacher, get involved at your school. And st- and and especially if you have an idea that you're going to be here for a long time. If you're married, if you have a very serious girlfriend, and then especially if you have kids, study that Japanese for a handful of years. Like mm-hmm. really, really study it, and don't don't worry too much how much you're involved, because it's more important later. It's more important when you have uh, children, mm-hmm. especially because I've heard you talk before. So you might, in, in a sense, you might one day go back to Canada. That That's actually kind of one of my, yeah, that, that is kind of the big picture plan for me. Yeah. yeah. And that, in some senses, that's fair enough. And I think if that's the major plan, then... If you, it's if you actually never, one of the reasons why I started my masters is because exactly. I'm I'm hoping to get involved and in, and in, in, you know possibly in the future of uh, you know maybe teaching at a community college working at a community college or getting involved in the private tech sector in Canada yeah so you make a decision and you, and and your decision was to is to study technology as opposed to Japanese and it's a fair decision and it, it's mm. great but if you the people who do finally realize that they're going to be here. Again, it's it's difficult to see the future, but and I didn't see it myself. But just sort of ran, you know, sort of. If mm-hmm. if if you're smarter than I was, focus on Japanese for a few years. Then when you start to become a father or a married man or a little bit older, then use the things that you learned 
and use the happiness that you have because you you had such a great experience here and then start to pay it back and i think that's a really japanese sort of style that idea that young people are spoiled and, and foreigners are often spoiled and we can sometimes be spoiled until we're maybe i don't know what the limit is but i have to watch myself that i don't allow people to spoil spoil me anymore because they're quite willing to um you know, buy me, you know, oh, you know, we'll pay for your drinks and we'll do this. Yeah, yeah, because they're just so, so happy that a foreigner is here. Mm. But yeah, hopefully, the country. hopefully, if, you, if you're able to enjoy that a lot when you're younger and learn Japanese and feel in what they call sort of giddy in a sense in Japanese, which is sort of a debt. Yeah. Mm. And there's a negativity, I think, of that for Western people, but it's not negative to Japanese people, in my opinion. Um, and maybe not as negative to, even to myself at this point where you do owe something back. And I think, I don't want to, to pretend that other people in other countries don't understand that. I think there's different words for it and, and different ideas about it. But maybe it's just simply in a sense that, I know sometimes I feel like I don't have the guidance. And so uh, that I would, if I was living in Canada, I'd have so many friends who are older and I have my father and I have everybody. And maybe a lot of us are like that. And we don't, people don't get involved because they ignore that debt that they have in a sense to a society, to a, to mm. a group, to, to a community. Mm. And uh, maybe I'm going on too much about it, but I think that if you can take advantage of how great so many things in this country are and then give back. And if you go home in between that time, you know, that's fine. That's not a big deal. That's part of, that's part of life. But if you do, if you do eventually decide that you're here, then I hope that more and more people over time uh, get involved and, and I, you know, speaking I, Japanese or whether they can speak Japanese or not. But yeah, I no, they can. I, no, I, I absolutely, I absolutely connect with what you're talking about. Um, I think even just like on a minor level, when you talk about this kind of paying it forward or giving it back about Japanese culture, I mean, I think it was just like on a minor level, like how, um, you know, there are definitely, there are Japanese staff at the place I work. But for example, if, if a staff member is sick mm, yes. on a day and they can't come into work because they're just too sick. And then, you know, uh, the other staff members, myself included, we, we take up the slack, so to speak. We have to cover, take care of their duties. The following day or a few days later when they're better, they come in and they will have actually like gifts, like maybe uh, snacks and drinks, like coffee drinks, and this and that, and they'll just leave them in the staff room and give them to all the stuff. And say thank you so much for helping while I was gone. There's, there's of course, and which is something I do as well. But yeah, oh, you do now. Oh, you, I you, I do that. Yeah, oh, that's wonderful. Oh, no, 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 I, I definitely do that. And the 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 foreign the the foreigners I work with have been in Japanese, in, sorry, in Japanese in Japan long enough where a lot of us do the same thing, or we just we just bring thank you gifts. Like I'll I'll maybe I have a break and I I just I run to the convenience store and I'll buy like several bags of snacks and I'll just See? bring them back to the staff room and I put them out on the table and I just say everyone enjoy. Thank you so much for working so hard. See my. I love that. I love that idea. And, and, but I'll, I'll admit my, my complete ignorance with that. I know the system. I've been here long enough and I've really sort of embraced the system, <laughs> yeah. but I'll, I'll use my, my working hours. Uh, I work quite long hours a lot of the time okay. and, and I just never remember ah, mm. to do it. I never remember to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i know it's 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 actually even like it gets to the point sometimes where i'm so used to having snacks in the staff room that like today even i went in i was like kind of hungry in the middle of the afternoon i worked i'm like what what there's nothing here what's going yeah. on nobody's been sick nobody's no been, one's bad. been sick and no one's <laughs> been traveling there's no omiyage here um people start traveling uh, we need a yep. long weekend yep. but yep. but the giving back i completely understand it's one of the things i mean i work really long hours as well and now i'm doing my grad studies and i i have very little free free time um mm. but one of the things i've even thought about doing with my limited japanese um you know if i did have some more time and i thought about this in the past and it's something i would do and I, a lot of foreigners could do this go to the local jidokan local community center and and you you could actually you don't have if if you're doing something for, I mean, at, at least in, in, in here in Kobe, at my local community center, if it's not for profit, um, you can get a room, really nice room, like a boardroom, a classroom. You can book and, you know, teach free English classes. 
Oh, I, that's a difficult one for me. That's that's. Oh, you really? That, no, that, I, only, I was just thinking that's something I thought I would do. Like maybe like I mean when I advertising for free English classes or something like that. But I mean I don't have experience doing that. Maybe no, you no, do. No. I don't know. no, no, not at all. But the only thing I would say along with that, all it's. I've done certain things like that, but I've always sort of received money from the, some group or other. I've never done it as a volunteer. But in a sense, English is my is my business. So, well, I mean, well, give, okay, when giving I'm, away when, when I'm thinking about this, when I'm uh, when I say not just free English classes, um, I, I'm thinking for more like like seniors and like maybe like putting out some kind of advertisement for seniors. Oh sure, yeah, yeah, yeah like I, I, like uh, free English classes for senior citizens. Yeah, yeah, or something like that. Not, not like for kids. I mean, because or kids or or students who have parents who are willing to pay for the same thing, because then you're undercutting people who are doing this as a living. But I mean, like maybe like free English classes for seniors or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. No, no, absolutely. I, I, I sound maybe slightly selfish when I say when I say things. No, like no, that. but I completely understand too. Yeah, <laughs> but, I, but I mean, I think it's a lovely idea, and I think if you if you gave it just a twist, it works perfectly. Be a little bit selfish. If I give advice to people, be a little bit selfish. Teach a class in in Japanese. If you can, if you want to practice your Japanese, you know. If, oh, they will teach you. Yeah, I guess a class about like international culture. Anything like, yeah, like that. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 write a speech or write your your notes and see if you can actually teach that class in Japanese. That would be that's a heck of a of a thing uh, to uh, to to accomplish, and it it would be beneficial to every single person involved, and it's a wonderful idea. Well, it could almost turn into possibly like kind of like a language a language exchange in a way. Sure, absolutely. Uh, for uh, if you if you had like you know Japanese students who came who could speak some English and you could help each other. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, yeah. And, and it's it's the the benefit even even if you were teaching English classes because I was a bit silly to uh, I, was, I was exaggerating my my uh, my reaction there. But even if you did that, the the payback in 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 financially and 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 socially and everything i i guarantee would come back more than you would have made if you if you tried to charge money for it because you'd be known people would know who you are and there's something really important about that mm, uh, yeah. in, and japan is i mean we've all in, in various things you maybe you, you people will talk to you about the clubs that in in certain areas that you you can't there's no sign on the door somebody has to bring you in oh yeah absolutely yeah 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 no i know there's a uh... A couple of guys I know who who do judo. Um, a couple of foreigners I know, or one one foreign guy I know specifically who's really heavily is an Australian friend of mine, very heavily involved in a lot of martial arts for many many years, and he did judo. And I can remember um, I, I used to do judo in high school, and I wanted to get back into it, but then uh, having young children, it's not been easy to free that time up in the evening so i haven't been able to in time i want to but uh, another co-worker was like oh you're in judo he's like yeah yeah i'm a member of a club but he's like oh can i join well i have to bring you and invite you yeah. and yeah. ask if they'll accept you and then if so then you're in and and it was, again like you said like the no sign on the door kind of club absolutely and that it is also a metaphor for the country in some senses it goes beyond the actual door that doesn't have a sign. It goes into people's minds. It goes into the community. It, making that kind of sacrifice, volunteering your time, giving up what might be financially better, uh, opens the to not be too poetic or silly. It opens the door to to people's you know to to people's hearts, even in a sense. Their trust, yeah, Their trust and everything, mm. and 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 the payback for that. In anything that, in any way that you want, if you want to learn about Japan, if you want to build a career, if you want to to build a family and a life, the payback is would be tremendous. And it, I think it's 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 a great idea if if, if people, you know, are at that point. Okay, so okay, I'm I'm curious. I want to go a couple. Of, right now, I'm I'm, I'm I've got some internal uh, internal struggle. There's two different directions I want to go in. Okay. Um, we'll go in them at some point, uh, both of them. But okay, have you met? Would you say, have you met people in your time in Japan? So you've been here for about 10 years. Sure. Have you met foreigners who have come here for the long haul, for the long term, who haven't taken the time to learn the language, who haven't gotten involved? Have you oh, have, have you have you met people who've been here much longer than you who have been in that sh- situation? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Most of them, I would say, most of them don't have children. Okay. I think that's... Um, I know a lot of people with children who are very different than me. They do different things than me. But there's a point at which uh, having children forces you uh, 
and you can go willingly or you can fight it. And a lot of people want to fight it for a long time. <laughs> if you if you go on some of the the Facebook pages and and try to find some some inf- just go on a Facebook page as a joke and type in, hey, I'm interested in my kid's about to join uh, uh, Japanese uh, kindergarten. What do you guys think? And just wait for the responses, because some people are kicking and screaming when they're being pulled into that that participation. Uh, because it's so much more than it would be in, in a, a place like Canada, I think. Uh, what, I mean, you've had a reasonable amount of experience with that. Mm. Or does yeah. your, your wife do a lot of that more? Oh, de- well, definitely my wife does because of my work schedule. Um, yeah, was- I'm just not able to really free up much time. Um, there's there's a tremendous amount of paperwork and a tremendous amount of bureaucracy. Oh, for like signing up for kindergarten, for dealing well, with even- the city, for dealing with um, – yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Even beyond that, even beyond that, into uh, I hope I don't get to uh, com- I don't complain too too much because I'm I'm hoping not to do that. Uh, but uh, I can remember going to a, signing up for a school. My kids got into a a, a daycare, and uh, well, they had to have two different bags. They had to, and one of the bags was empty most of the time. You the I'd main say, bag and the sub bag. Yeah, but I said to them, I said, to them, okay, I have two little girls now. And I have to drop them off on the way to the train. It's the only possible way that I can help my wife and help my family. Mm-hmm. It's the only possible way that I can be involved. And and more than that, I had to do it. My wife was busy. So, I, but I had to bring my bag too. So I've got two kids on the bicycle together with their four bags and my one bag and these, these empty bags. And you just say, nobody complained. Nobody ever said <laughs> that maybe this is not the best thing. But the the way I gotta say is eventually you have to sort of get past that, and I hope I, I'm kind of past. Well, it I mean the thing is that's you know I had this conversation with some people today. Um, you know, here in Japan, you've got a few different types of foreigners, and you've got the people. Okay, when you when you when you meet the people who've been here for a long time, who are happy yeah. and content, and seem to be enjoying their lives, those are the people that realize that you need to let go, and you need to compromise yeah and you need to realize that this is a different culture it's different than what i expect sometimes it's not logical at all but it's different and And to be and and to to like fight it often it's just like beating your head against a brick wall absolutely and to be honest i am i have had bad days i've had bad maybe years and we all have and the one thing that i've been really lucky i'll say two things the one thing i've been really lucky with for not complaining is uh, in the last, let's say, four or five years, my my um, my jobs have lined up well. Okay. And I haven't been stressed out specifically about that. Okay. And before that, there was, you know, there's a lot of when you're, you know, if people haven't been here, uh, I think you've hinted at it in certain spots in your show in the past. There's a tremendous amount of stress coming up in this time of year because there's a lot of people, and I'll say Yao City. I believe every teacher in Yao City right now. Mm-hmm doesn't know if they have a job or is just learning that they do not have a job oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. in in eight weeks from now. Are you, and you're referring to foreign teachers? Yes. This, yeah, yeah. I yeah, know this, this is, this is the hiring season, the hiring and firing season. So I've been lucky enough to have escaped that. Yeah. Knock well, on wood. You know, I'm in a situ- I'm in the same situation. Yeah. I don't have to worry about, I'm, I, you know, I, I returned to uh, the company I, I used to be with and I'm, I'm I'm good, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, but I do understand, um, you know. Uh, for example, uh, last year, I took the time. I spent. Uh, it was only. It was literally. It wasn't a year. It was like uh, not even a full school year working for Osaka City, and I don't work for them anymore, so I can talk about it. I won't talk in great detail, but um, they they basically came up with a program. Uh, the mayor of Osaka City uh, wanted to kind of. Um, uh, didn't want to rely on the teat, so to speak, of the uh, dispatch ALT companies anymore. So he wanted to create his own kind of kind of jet-like clone program, um, and uh, good for the people who got in. But it's it was like literally a three-year cap. So is at, it? Is at, it? Yeah, three years. So I've heard. I I mean, it may have changed, but when I was when oh. I was hired, it, the initial year they started partway through the school year. It was seven months. For that yeah. first year, and that was considered a year contract, and then two years after that. That's the normal, and that's I'll, I'll say that I. At I think some the points, jet program was like that is like that too. Normally, three years. Yeah, and then you could you could do two extra years. 
if if you were if you were advanced in some way or other. But apparently, with with when I left uh, working for Osaka City, it was just three. So I th- I, um, now I can't get in too deeply into it because I don't know enough about it. Mm. And uh, maybe someday I'll I'll uh, be lucky enough to work for. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll have to work for yeah. I'll have to work for for Osaka or I'll want to work. I don't know. I don't want to say anything negative. Um, but I, maybe there might be a few different styles of jobs they have, mm. and one of them. No, is I, I think I think you're right. I think you're right yeah. um, because there there are people who um, there are different styles of jobs. This was kind of like for like a this mass initiative that they had. Yeah. What was it? I, and exactly, I mean, for, there, there for, were people who did different types of jobs. I mean, there were people who worked for the BOE who were doing translation work. There were people who worked for the BOE. BOE doing things that I didn't understand because I wasn't there at their offices. You know, I was just kind of like a in the trenches teacher. Well, as two people who don't specifically need or or want those jobs right now, yeah, that's probably possibly if there's anybody outside the country who's hoping to come here, um, that's a, a great thing to advertise, I think, because that is a real step up from the average job that people are going to get when they come here. Yeah, um, it's I don't know if it's it's not perfect, no. but uh, the 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 guy in charge of his name if his name's Matthew, I'm not 100 percent sure, but um, he seems to be doing much better than I've come across. Well, before. I mean, I mean, the thing is, I mean, and this this has come up in previous episodes. The diff, you know, the difference between being a dispatch ALT teacher versus being a direct hire. Direct hire is it is definitely much better. Yes, and although and sometimes maybe you have to do a lot more desk warming, you're going to get a monthly salary that is of the same. And if you have a family and you need a budget, and if you don't have a family, maybe you've got a student loan you've got to pay. There's a certain amount of money you need to allocate every month for debts or this or that. Um, when you're a dispatch, work for a dispatch company, every month your salary is different. So again, if if I was, if I was, uh, if everybody was able to see ten years in the future, and I was able to see ten years in the past, I would say the, those first two years, if you're studying or if you're working, the average. Um, English language job in a Kaiwa English school or dispatch company. Mm-hmm. Fine for those two years, study your Japanese. Mm-hmm. Then look for a job. Even specifically, they continually hire in Osaka, and I love Osaka. And I'll I, and I would push people come live in Yao. Uh, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd I'd love to to have more and more people live here. Um, uh, and then there's I, there's hopefully even steps above that. Uh, but I think that that. Yeah, that's. I mean, well, I think, I think, I think once you learn the Japanese, that opens so many more doors to you. Yeah. And 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 to be honest, I mean, one of the, I mean, there's like you know, warts and all. There's a lot of downsides to working in a public school system, but if if there's any benefit, well, there's two. I think of number one, you're immersed in the culture, you're immersed in the language, you're yes. gonna be using it, and then at the same time, you're also gonna have enough free time to do a lot of studying. Yes, yes, and and. There's a lot of positives about that, mm-hmm. uh, and then ho- again, hopefully later on, you'll get it something even better. Yeah, well, I mean, it, even if it's like you know, we've already kind of uh, talked about the hinted at the entrepreneurial side of life in Japan. Yeah. Um, if you want to run a business in Japan, you need to be able to speak Japanese. Certainly, for yeah. the most part. I mean, m- well, I mean, I've met a few who don't, but for the most part, most people I do meet who are foreigners, American, Canadian, Australian, who do run some sort of business. And I don't mean even a language school. I mean, like they run a restaurant, they run something. They, they're able to communicate. Yes. With yes. clients. Yes. Like with customers who come in the store, with their employees. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And or have a partner who's like a, a half of yourself. Mm. Somebody, somebody that close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you can get away without the Japanese possible. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's like a lot of people have said to me, Ken, why don't you start a business? I'm like, well, I'm not an entrepreneur. My wife, um, my wife would kill me. <laughs> and, and then like, why don't you get your wife to help you? Like, and, and the same thing, she would kill me. And she doesn't want to because she doesn't want to be involved in a business. And at I've, the end of the I've, day, I don't either. So I've had a few business opportunities in a sense that, or business dreams, maybe. I don't need to exaggerate what I what that might have been. But um, and the end was that, I had to look at it and I had to say, can I do this? And can I do it by myself? And when the answer was probably not quite, and the answer was, I can't burden my wife with this sort of thing. Yeah. Then the answer was, well, you're not doing that right now. Or you, or maybe you have to study Japanese a bit more and or, you know, 
whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, you're burning people. Here, can you fill out this tax form? What does this government form say? What does yeah. this, you know, that that's not nice. That's not fun. Yeah. No, absolutely not. <laughs> okay, so um, okay, so Josh, you, uh, I'm curious. I'm I'm gonna jump a uh, jump around here. Um, you uh told me that you uh, you run a Facebook page for the city yeah. of Yao. Oh, pardon me, not for the city of Yao. Well, uh, no, no, I mean not not for. I mean about the city yeah. of Yao. I should say. It's, uh, that's a, yeah, that four is a difficult one. Eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to say four. Say, yeah. I know. I, I actually that that was that's my bad. Not uh, at all. Not I, at all. I read in our messages you you run an information page about the city of Yao. Well, not at all. Yeah, I just mean the sort of as a as a again pe- being involved in teaching language, you get sort of. Uh, is it for the city of Yao? Is well, when for? I say when I say for the city of Yao, that that insinuates that, that you're actually an employee of the city of Yao, um, uh, you know. But uh, so, can you tell us about this Facebook page? Sure. Um, Basically, uh, along with the translations that we do for the uh, the Jin Ken Kyokai, which is the the Human Rights Center that we spoke about before, okay, uh, there are those disagreements that we have about what should be in it and what shouldn't be. And so, basically, I use the Facebook page to put uh, because the publication takes quite a long time, and sadly, sometimes we miss deadlines. Okay. Um, I have done it myself. I try to be professional, but I'll admit that I, I've been a day later to before. But often, just the whole publication process and the editing process takes too long. And so this information comes out minutes late, days late, or weeks late. Okay. So I use the Facebook page to, to spread that information. Okay, good. Nice. Plus the information that I found specifically interesting. Okay. And then besides that, basically what it is, is um, I take pictures of posters I see around town mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, pamphlets I see at the train station or wherever. And sometimes I can't understand them perfectly just at first glance. And I, you know, I get my dictionary out and I check a few things if I don't understand it. And then I try to explain it on, on the Facebook page. And the majority of it is selfishness. It's just for myself uh, to practice my Japanese and to understand what's around me, uh, okay. to, make myself, to make myself comfortable, to make myself feel uh, you know, a part of this, and and uh, it's it's grown. It's maybe I think we're we're only about like fifty or sixty people. It's not a it's not a very big page, uh, but it's slowly growing. Uh, the sad thing is, as we said before, people leave. Mm. So I've got four or five people on the page who who don't live in Japan anymore. You know, but uh, and then four or five new people come along, and hopefully I'll, I'll I'll grow it to a certain point. I would love to grow it to a point where a huge part of us could speak Japanese, can speak Japanese, and a huge part uh, the other half can't. And it becomes uh, the people who can sharing, and the people who can't asking, um, and yeah, basically, and, and sort of you know, and everybody learning because that's the, one of the best things about me, the th- the experience that I've had, especially with the working with the the Human Rights Center and with them with the city, that I understand the city. I understand certain things, especially the the pension and, and taxes, yeah, better than the av- especially better than the average Japanese person my age. Mm. Um, which well, because that's that's your focus. That's what yeah, you're, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I can give directions in this city better than the average, the average Japanese person. Uh, I don't I don't want to exaggerate, but my I would make mistakes in the grammar, but I know where the, I know where everything is. Just because we've done so many maps, we've done okay. so many, uh, you know, that sort of thing. So I yeah, that's basically what the page is about. I hope to it grows uh, within this community, uh, but I mean, it certainly has a limit. It'll never be anything very big, I don't think. Unless these people take my advice and, and, and come to Osaka and get the job with the city and live in Yao. You know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's niche, so to speak, yeah. you know. I mean, yeah. it is it is very centric to the area you're in, um, you know, but uh, but that's great. It's a great service. I mean... Yeah, and I've just, I've made I've made a conscious decision to, to avoid... Every once in a while, some of the smaller cities do something, I'll put some stuff up, but I've, I specifically avoided talking about Osaka as the city. <laughs> Uh, because that information is there, um, mm. at, and it's not helpful for me to, to do it again. It's, it, I think it literally can be. I hope it can be helpful because this information is not there. The information that I'm that I'm putting out there. Okay. Okay. So, well, well, I'm I'm curious. Okay. Now, so uh, for for people who want to come to Japan, you know, they're they're sitting in their their homes, their cars, listening to this podcast, wherever they may be, and maybe they're they're not going to come here long term. Maybe they're going to come as a jet, and they're going to work for one year, two years, three years, yeah. and they're going to leave. Um, how would you say those people who are going to come here for 
kind of a short term. How can they get involved in their local community? And what would the, even though they're only going to be here for a short term, what would the benefits be for them? Sure. Well, I would say, as I sort of said before, possibly, uh, that you can get involved just at your at your own job. Okay. And, and hopefully with the Jets, your job and your school and your community is the same thing. Where with other jobs, sometimes that doesn't work out quite that well. You live at the, the next town over. Mm. But the community you get involved with, especially if you're here for a short term and you have no children, there's no specific benefit to only getting involved in this one community. For me, there is at this point because there's a hope that I can, if, if this community becomes better, my children are here. Okay, yeah, yeah. But for people who are here for the short time, get involved in any community. Mm. Um, yeah, just I mean, for fun. Yeah, absolutely. But for the sake of learning and meeting friends, I guess. I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. And the only thing I'll say, if I can, I don't want to go off topic too much, but sometimes it takes a bit of luck to really get involved. Mm-hmm. But you have to. So, so my advice to them would be: make sure everybody knows you want to be involved. I kind of giggled there because I understand what you mean by that. Yeah. I mean, it, it's. Uh, do you think it's? Uh, which is going to lead me to say: Do you think it's harder? To, you know, now you lived in Yamaguchi, and yeah. now you're living in Yao. Do you th- Do you think it's harder to get involved in the community if you live in a big city versus a small town? That's. <sighs> I mean, yes. But I, which what would you, which way would you guess I would go? I wonder. <laughs> I, you I, guess, know, I was leading you, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah. of course. I mean, I, I guess it was a, a more of a rhetorical question. But I mean, I mean, I find personally, yeah. I, I'm I'm and I'm just okay. From my experience, I'm going to think about like back in 2002, yeah. I first came to Asia, and I moved to a small, not a small. It was it was a, a bedroom community of Seoul. Big by Canadian standards, maybe small by Asian standards, city wise. Sure. But damn, there were almost no foreigners anywhere, <laughs> and I had to learn how to speak some Korean, and mm. I had and and I had to make Korean friends because I wanted friends, and the only friends I was going to have were Korean, and it was great. I met Korean people, but and, and then then did you get involved because of that? Did I become involved? I don't sure if I so much. I was I think I was too young and stupid to become involved. Um, uh, but I had a lot of Korean friends and had a lot of fun hanging out with Korean people and, and learning a lot about Korea. Whereas in, when I came to Kobe, there's just foreigners all over the place. Yeah. Everywhere I go. <laughs> and there was a lot of English all over the place. And it seemed that like a lot of the Japanese people everywhere I went seemed to speak English. And it just kind of, kind of led to a bit of laziness on my part. Sure. Yeah, I, I guess then you're probably coming down. I, I guess in a sense I have to come down in the middle, because to be fair, uh, I can't judge Yamaguchi too harshly because my Jap- I spoke no Japanese then. Oh okay okay. And and like I was just learning, and I've made a few friends and and everything, but it was a difficult year to be honest. Uh, I was 23 years old. I just graduated, and and did, I felt like I didn't have friends. Uh, not to get too political. Uh, Two days after I got here, George Bush won his his second term, mm-hmm. and we we'd been sort of promised by Michael Moore that that wasn't going to happen, and it, it shocked me to be here. And, uh, and, and, and I believe he actually visited the city of Sarnia in uh, Bowling for Columbine. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah I remember that he interviewed the that mayor was, of Sarnia. I don't know if I said uh, off topic a little bit, but my favorite thing if you, if anybody has a chance to see that movie again, he came to my high school. And they turned them away. He said, you can't shoot. <laughs> it's the middle of the day. You can't interview students. Their parents aren't here to sign. You can't come in the high school. So he went down the street to, if, if you check the movie out again, I don't know if you can see the Taco Bell sign, but he went to the local Taco Bell and he interviewed I all remember, the kids. I remember, yes, I remember that, yeah. All the kids that skipped school. Ah. And I don't, uh, I haven't seen them for years, but... It's kind of it's sort of interesting to see that his responses he got were were what he wanted exactly what he wanted, but I wish he had interviewed our valedictorian a bit more. It would have <laughs> maybe made, the best of the best as opposed to kids, look a little bit better. as opposed to the kids who skipped school and went to the Taco Bell. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah okay. Cool. <laughs> but 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 to go back, so I can't I can't judge Yamaguchi too harshly. Yeah, uh, because of my own uh, limited ability at that point, mm-hmm. but it was, it really felt difficult to get involved there. Mm-hmm. Thinking back, and uh, as opposed to let's say Osaka or Kobe, where there's another there's a difficulty there too because it's so easy not to. It's uh, 
and maybe quite maybe there's a line of people who want to get involved, you know. Um, but I'm in the middle, which Yao City, I would I put that right in the middle between Yamaguchi and uh, so Kobe's uh, a million people. Uh, a million and a half, okay. one point five million about. Right, yeah. I think Yao is a quarter million. Okay. And so uh, there's opportunity here. Mm. There's a chance to get involved. And and to be honest, and and just to be completely clear, I've lived in two different places in Yao. And one was very old fashioned. And that I, I was not, I was involved with the city that entire time. Okay. But I was not, and um, part of it is just my kids were, were babies, but I was not involved with the community very much. And part of that was that it was not very inviting to be involved in that community because oh, okay. it was, because everybody's grandmother was on these boards and everybody's grandfather did these things. And even my wife was a foreigner in this place. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, that, I mean, you know, that maybe I mean she's Japanese, but she's a foreigner because she's not from that place. Exactly. Yeah, you know, that's that's the way. Uh, that's not even sometimes that's not even a Japanese thing. You know, that can be a Canadian yeah. thing too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I I grew up. Uh, my mom is from Hamilton. Mm. My dad is from Cornwall, Ontario. I I I grew up in Eastern Canada, uh, in Cape Breton Island, and I was born there. My, yeah. Live my whole like my whole life there, and I can remember even having kids say to me when I was like junior high and high school, "You're not from here. You don't <laughs> understand. You're not from here." And I'm like, "I am from here. I was born in the same freaking hospital as you." But it well, was Jeff, be, because it was a, like their 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 parents and their grandparents and their great parents and their great great grandparents and their great 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 grandparents. You know, yeah. well, Japanese people would never say that. Yeah, well, at least would, been, but a Canadian least, would happily say that. <laughs> yeah, but but what they would do is is there was quiet, um, mm. there was a quiet uh, discrimination. I don't want to exaggerate it because it's not that it wasn't yeah. a big deal or anything. But but the point of that a, is a that a quiet cold shoulder. Exactly, and maybe I deserved it. Maybe I I I, I was twenty four, twenty five years old when I moved there, and and maybe I was noisy. Maybe I you know I was certainly I'm a bit more sort of Japanesey at this point than I was then. And I'm still kind of big and noisy sometimes. I, a little I'm sure bit of bang, people. bang, crash, crash, that we sometimes. Canadian style. So, yeah, sometimes. yeah. But the the final point with all that, between the, the small and the big and, and, and what's great about this middle part is that I eventually, I, I, I found, I, I moved. And even before I moved, I, I on Facebook and eventually in person, I bumped into this man. And I won't say his name just because I never asked him if I could. Uh, sure. It was meeting him, you know, just one person, and maybe th there's there's sort of happenstance in the fact that he's from a different place, uh, and maybe he at some point in his life felt like he wasn't from here too, he, uh, not different places in as in a different country, but a different place in Japan. Okay. And very quickly he invited me in, and I was nervous, right? I felt I, I felt like, you know, am I a pet monkey here? Am I? Am I here to to dance and sing? In a subject, I, I worried, but it became very obvious very quickly. No, because they were they were saying, "Can you do this? Can you do that?" And I'd have to really think about it and say, well, "Yes, I can do that," or "No, I can't do that." Or I'd really like to try. Mm -hmm. But very quickly, because one person invited me in, that door opened that we talked about before, and I was here and I was in, and I hopefully haven't or won't make you know silly, stupid mistakes that might jeopardize that. You know, what I mean? but I I think I'm past my my youthful silliness and I, I don't you know I don't think I'm uh, I'm of that vein anymore so I, I it just the whole point is that uh, I, I would say that the middle is probably the best place to get involved a place that has seen foreigners before a place that has interacted with foreigners before but not too much not like like to the point that it's not anything so that in, what I mean is that you don't want to be a trailblazer here, in a sense. If you move to a really small place and you try to get involved, you might have trouble. I mean, it's possible. Hopefully not. It's just it's sometimes it's just luck, mm -hmm. and you might. It's possible you might get some pushback. Yeah. But it's also possible that if you went down the street, just down the street, that you'd find a great place. And it's difficult, I know, but it's sometimes you have to really get a feel of where you're about to move to. And I don't know if the average foreigner thinks about that sort of thing when they choose a place to live, as opposed to how close it is to the train station, the price, 
um, how comfortable you know it is. what i'm sure the average foreigner doesn't and i mean it's difficult but i didn't um uh, this yeah. was literally we moved to um we moved to Kobe because my wife was working in Osaka, and at the time, I was working in a place called Akashi, and Kobe was halfway between. Yeah. And that's how we ended up here. Well, yeah, I don't mean to exact. Yeah, I hope not no, to exact. No, no, yeah. but I mean, you know, it, it wasn't, you know, not, but, but I do understand, like, I mean, for, for those people maybe who are thinking of long term, yeah. uh, I think that's a key thing to think of where maybe you want to be. Yeah. Well, I just, in the end, it's, it's maybe, I don't know if, if it's an actually important point, but sort of the point would be don't be the first you don't at this point you don't need to be the first foreigner to get involved a lot of the time you don't you can often go find a place that somebody's there and you might say to them hey how's this place is it i i'd like you know i have uh, this young daughter and i sort of is the school good is the community good mm -hmm. and especially in the next 10 years uh as japan ages the older people start to pass away mm. the population shrinks more especially Asian workers are going to be coming here. Yeah. And maybe also uh, more foreign work, foreign from any country possible, especially compared to the, eventually that 1% that we are is going to become 2%. It's going to become 3%. It might become 5%. And if you are involved, if you're able to become involved, then that's going to be a very pleasant growth because I, I hope, and I, again, I don't want to exaggerate because I don't do all that much with, with the reality of what I'm involved in. But I hope that what I am involved in and being involved says to these people, I want to make this a good place too. And the next foreigner, let's assume that he does too. Let's give him that instead of maybe being worried when he comes, which is still a reaction in this country when, you know, that there might be that sort of, oh, there goes the neighborhood sound of reaction sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if a number of us that are here now and involved and able to do it, do step in and become involved in these certain things, then that reaction might change. And that reaction might be, hey, let's invite that guy too. Mm. Or the foreigner could be the one who invites the next foreigner. You know, the, the Canadian can invite the, the Australian that moves in. Uh, that's happening in my neighborhood. Uh, uh, I'm lucky enough to live... Uh, just off the city, just outside the city. And it's a really, really affordable, I get it, by Japanese standards, mm -hmm. that you can buy a house here in this area. Uh, this, the, the school has a good reputation. We, we are close to a train station. And you can get to the city. I can be in, in Namba in, in under 20 minutes. Oh, wow. Nice. And so it's people, since I've been here, we've had two other foreign families move into the neighborhood we've got three or four in the same grade oh, wow. and it looks looking to the future it seems like there's going to be a point when there's going to be five or six kids in the same grade together mm -hmm. and we're not going we're not going to a, a private school none of us is, is so far mm -hmm. um but again if and seemingly it must we must grow in this country it's going to happen mm -hmm. and if we set ourselves up right in every way we can I think it could be a wonderful change. Um, some people worry about it. <laughs> Japanese people often worry about that. These things that are coming. But there are changes coming. There are, there are. Indeed. Okay, well, you know what, um, Josh, this has been really awesome. Really great talk uh, tonight. Um, but I'm just looking at the time. And um, I'm curious. If people want to find you online... Uh, they, yeah. want to check, they want to check out some of the things that now I'm going to add all these uh, I'll, I'll add all the links to uh, I mean you can actually just kind of explain what you're doing and uh, you know send me the links I'll put all the links in the show notes at boostonkevin.com so under okay. episode number 50 of the uh, the Just Japan podcast all the links that you know if, if Josh wants to contact Josh or just what he's doing um, the kind of things they'll all be there but um, how, how can people find you online sure I guess I would just say that uh, you look up the uh, go to the Facebook Mm -hmm. and search Yao City English. Okay. If that does, I, I'm pretty sure that'll come, it'll come up. Uh, if not, add information at the end, Yao City English information. Um, specifically, if you are in Osaka or okay. you, if you're a younger person or whatever age you are and you're thinking about coming to Japan and Osaka might be a good option, uh, you might get some ideas about what we're, what we're doing there. Uh, nice. Okay, cool. I, I also have sort of 
daydreams about trying to start up some YouTube stuff. But if that ever happens, I'll let you know. Okay, cool. You let me know and I'll let the folks know. Um, so I'll also put a link to the uh, to the Yao uh, Facebook page in the show notes. So go check Great. that out, guys. And um, yeah, so Josh, thank you so much for taking the time to do this tonight. Thank you. I hope I stayed reasonably on point. <laughs> ah, it was great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kevin. Please hang up and try again. Okay, I want to thank Josh for taking the time to sit down with us here at the Just Japan Podcast, episode number 50, and share his experiences living in Japan um, and interacting with the Japanese community and being part of the community. Really awesome stuff. I really enjoyed that interview. Uh, definitely eye-opening for me, which is one of the greatest things about this podcast is that I always get to learn new things, um, talk to new people, and uh, yeah, really kind of you know get a feel for these different experiences. I guess that's one of the reasons why you know you guys out there love listening to the show. Um, yeah, so uh, Josh, thank you so much. Um, you know the, the links to uh, the things he talked about will be in the show notes at busonkevin.com. So go check those out. All right, guys, that is it for episode number fifty of the Just Japan podcast. Everything you want to know about Japan. Remember, you can listen to the Just Japan podcast on iTunes, where you can subscribe to us and always get the latest episodes. You can also listen to us on Stitcher Internet Radio. Every episode is there as well. You can find us on SoundCloud, on the Libsyn Web Player, and, well, you know, hey, we're all over the place. Uh, you can, of course, find me, uh, Kevin, uh, the host of the Just Japan podcast, on Twitter at JLandKev. I'm pretty active on Twitter, usually on there most days. Actually, I'm on there every day. Some days more than others, depending on, you know, my schedule. Um, one of the best ways to interact with the Just Japan podcast community with myself is by liking the the Facebook page, the Just Japan podcast Facebook page. And I'm on that thing all the time. I've got the uh, Facebook page app on my iPhone, and I'm, I'm, I'm always fiddling around there. I'm, I spend spend a lot of time there interacting with you awesome peeps so keep up interacting with me on the facebook page and if you're not already go like it links in the show notes uh boost on kevin.com under episode number 50 actually under every episode uh you can of course check me out on youtube uh my main channel is boost on kevin youtube.com slash boost on kevin my secondary channel my blog channel my vlog channel unedited videos about japan is uh, youtube.com slash jlandkev, same as my Twitter. Those links will be in the show notes at boostonkevin.com. Uh, don't forget, you can always support the show if you enjoy listening to it. Uh, you know, you can always give a little bit to to help us out. That's at patreon.com slash boostonkevin. That link will be in the show notes. And I want to give a special thanks to gaijinpot.com. Uh, thanks so much for uh, helping spread the word of the Just Japan podcast by featuring us on the blog. Definitely appreciate that. So, guys, you guys, if, if you want a job in Japan, and I'm not getting paid for this, guys. I'm not a, I'm not sponsored. This this podcast is not sponsored at all or monetized in any way. I'm just going to say, if, if, if you're interested in getting a job in Japan, go to gaijinpot.com. Um, every job I've ever had in Japan, I actually got literally through gaijinpot.com. Um, so go check, out, go check out their blog. The Gaijinpot blog is a, an amazing source of information about Japan. So go check that out. Bookmark those sites. Go there often. Go check out moregeek.com. M-O-A-R geek.com. Go bookmark that website. Very cool geek website. And I'm a geek, so I appreciate it. I'm kind of new onto that website. Um, I really didn't even know it was around until um, I found out I was on it. And then now the last few days I've been hanging out on that site. Actually, I just posted an article about the horrific lack of sales of the Xbox One in Japan. Uh, moregeek.com did a cool story about that and I posted that on the Facebook page so go check that out um, yeah and I want to thank Tofugu who uh, may be a future guest on the uh, on the Just Japan podcast in talks just have to figure out our scheduling uh, so there, there could be an episode with Tofugu so um, guys thank you so much this is Kevin, Kevin O'Shea your host of the Just Japan podcast everything you want to know about Japan episode number 50 guys 50 episodes in pretty much, I think, about one year I've done. So, dang, pretty good, huh? Uh, I, I, I thank you all for all of the um, support you've given me, the listenership, the, the wonderful vibes, 
and all that stuff. Oh, and by the way, I forgot. If you want to email me about anything, just Japan podcast at gmail.com. Just Japan podcast at gmail.com. Yes. And back to thanking you. So thank you guys. You guys are awesome. You are cool. Uh, again, I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to the episode, to download it. Share this with your friends, guys. Help spread the word of the Just Japan podcast. Tweet out the links. Post the episode on your Facebook page, your G+, whatever it may be. Um, you guys are the ones who are helping spread the word, and I really, really appreciate it. So take care wherever you may be in the world. and You guys are all over the place. Um, be safe, be happy, be healthy, and I will be talking to you very soon. Thank you.